there was evening and there was morning the first day evening and there was morning the first day god bless everybody hope y'all are doing well coming back once again still answering a few questions you know we're going back to genesis but not to read a bunch of scriptures and everything but to go a little bit deeper you know answering questions and once again i want to give a shout out to my man jay who's been you know following along with the videos on you know the fallen angels and so many different things and god bless you that's why i want to go a little bit deeper about the evening and there was morning because the way we see that nowadays the way time is and the way people view a day you know when you look at the way the bible tells us we so off from it and god separated light from darkness he separated it as a matter of fact in genesis 1 it showed us that in the beginning of time it was marked by darkness mm. and it showed us how the earth was 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 without form and, and void and that darkness was over the face of the deep see light came after darkness once again so that was indicating the markers of a full day not as we see nowadays. See, most people pretty much are just going to, you know, accept what they have been told, you know, and, and never do any studying, Big Brother Jay. See, and as a matter of fact, in the Jewish tradition, days follow this pattern of night first and then day. That's why he said the evening and the morning was the first day. And if you miss that in Genesis, then... You're going to really be lost on a whole lot of things. So instead of just accepting what a lot of people have taught me my, in my life, I really go back and do true studying. And I found out just in my life that, you know, I've been taught wrong on a whole lot of things. You know, they taught us how to be religious. They taught us tradition. They taught us holidays. They taught us all this stuff that don't have nothing really to do with the truth. And once you learn the truth, it open up it open up your it open up your eyes, man, and you'll be like, wow. That's why when I look at Genesis, it's so deep. But like I was saying, in the Jewish tradition, days follow this pattern of night first. And uh, just like how like the Jews observe the Sabbath beginning on sunset of Friday until sunset on Saturday. But like I say, but we see how in today's time, where, well, the day starts at midnight, let's say it like that, we see it's totally different than the way the Bible taught us. Now, Jason, I'm going back to your other question. That's why I wanted to point this out first, you know, about the days and how Christians look at it. You asked me about Jesus, you know, rising from the dead. And we already know what this sign is going to be, you know. We about to get ready to hear a bunch of hooping and hollering and spitting in microphones once again about how he got up early Sunday morning. You know, he rose again. And a lot of preachers, they just stuck on that. I get so sick of hearing this hooping and hollering message about he got up on Sunday morning. I'm, the reason I'm so sick of it is because I be hearing it not just on no Easter Sunday. Yeah, I don't know. I don't care nothing about Easter. I teach the truth. But I, I heard this sermon all during the year. It's amazing to me how preachers will start off teaching one thing, and then next thing you know, they wind up on the cross. He rose again three days. And some of them just can't preach at all. And I'm just going to be honest. They sitting around just getting a couple of scriptures together so they can build that up to getting ready to hoop and holler about how he rose again on Sunday morning. And I know I just made a lot of people mad with saying that, but hey, man, the truth is just the truth, especially in most Baptist churches. You're going to hear that. And now let's get back to your question. I wanted to point that out first too because I feel your email. I feel your email. And um your email is so on point. Jesus rising from the dead. I'm gonna do a, a quick teaching about this and then I get out of the way. Because like I said, in most Baptist churches, you're gonna hear a lot of others, you know, teach that he rose on Sunday. But this is not to cause no debate. This is to uh, bring out some truth 
of what the Bible say and then get out of the way. Now, if you can feel what I just said about the evening and the morning being the first day, not the second day, then it's going to make a whole lot of sense to you. It's going to make a lot of sense to you. Now, there's three days, three days and three nights. A lot of people don't even say three nights. They say three days, you know. Jesus told us that it would be just like Jonah was in the belly of the well. Now, this is what Jesus said, not what JT said. Three days and three nights. He said that so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Three days and three nights. So when you look at that in the right time, you're looking at about, let's say, yeah, 72 hours. Jesus defined the length of a day in John, he told us. And he said, are, are there not 12 hours in a day? Well, if there is 12 in a day, then there are 12 hours in the night. Mm. But like I say, we look at, oh, it's midnight. This is the way we look at it. Oh, it's midnight. You know, here it is, a new day. Jesus said, are there? Hmm. That, that, that right there showed me a lot. Are there not 12 hours in a day? If you're looking at it according to the way the Bible look at it. Well, if there's 12 in a day, 12 hours a night. So therefore, Three days and three nights, once again, will be 72 hours. So if you place Jesus in the grave at sundown, just like the scripture says, and that that day was was uh, preparation and the, and the Sabbath, we, we know about the Passover Sabbath, was Thursday on that week, then his resurrection had to be 72 hours later at sundown. So that's why I don't believe he rose on Sunday morning. But like I say, I'm not doing this to, to, to debate in no kind of way. This you asking me a question, I'm answering it, you know, the best way that I know how and what I believe. So that's why I don't teach people that he rose again early Sunday morning. That's almost impossible according to what the word says. But like Big Brother Minute Man say, the point is he rose again. So let's let's say it like that also. And because let me say this, because if I say that he rose on Sunday when I do teachings like this. Then that means he stayed in the grave three days and four nights. Three days and four nights. See, that's impossible to me. How could he be crucified on Friday and then resurrected on Sunday after being buried for three days? I can't squeeze three days between Friday and Sunday, not according to the way the Bible looks at time. Ain't no way Ain't no way I can squeeze three days between Friday and Sunday. Not three days and three nights. So to me, he died on the Wednesday and not Friday. See, people accept tradition. They accept religion. But they're not going to accept the truth most of the time. So when I teach, I try to I try my best, you know, to teach what the word of God say, not about what my mama say, not about what granddad and them taught when they was the, the pastor of the church and all this stuff. If it's not what the Lord say, then, you know, you're just going to accept pretty much anything anybody say. That's why I look at those three days and those three nights. But I always remember what Genesis say, evening and the morning was the first day. Not morning and the evening. That's uh, why a lot of people right now are confused and they're looking at that man-made calendar. This is why our time is so far from God's time once again also. So I hope this makes sense to you, big brother. Uh, I love the questions and hope you are having a, a, a beautiful, blessed day. And uh, with that being said, we're going to go ahead and get up out of here, you know. So God bless you. God keep you. Let's keep on moving forward. And I love doing videos like this, you know, and love to see people's, you know, feedback and inputs. I love how we all bring something to the table because we all are in this thing together. So with that being said, if you can't push, pull. If you can't pull, get on out of the way. Peace.